Hi, this video will demonstrate the use of the uh, interferometry program Interfringe to process shearing interferograms or shearograms. I'm going to open a, a shearing panel, and the shearing panel consists of a notebook page with two sub notebook pages one for X shear and the other for Y shear. As you may know, in order, to pro in order to generate a, um, a model of the original wavefront, it's necessary to have two shearograms orthogonal to each other. Interfringe requires those orthogonal shearograms to be oriented along the x and y axes. So let me open an interferogram. This one I'll pick is the x interferogram. It's a, um, it's a, sh it's a phase-shifting interferogram. This is a five-frame phase-shifting interferogram. You can see as we step through the, uh, the different images, you can see how the phase is shifted. Um, I'm going to define a boundary now so that I can process this interferogram. As you can tell, it's not a circular interferogram. It's, uh, it has an aspect ratio of two. So I'm going to set that aspect ratio and adjust a boundary to go around the left of the two uh, wave fronts that were used in this shearogram. As you can see, there's, um, there's an area of overlap which has interference fringes, and then there's an overall area which has some parts of it not uh, um, with no interference. That, that area is where the left, inter the left wave front um, was present, but no right wave front was there to interfere with it. All right, um, I'm going to define this boundary. All right, and I need to find a secondary boundary. The secondary boundary goes across the right, it goes around the right wave front. Now there's a light green outline here, which has been generated by the software. That light green outline goes around the area that we're going to analyze. It's most of the area of overlap of the two wave fronts. Since this is a phase shifting interferogram, we're going to use phase shifting analysis. First I'm going to set the density of the analysis points, and since this is a relatively small interferogram, we're going to use every point. And I'm going to use the five frame phase shifting analysis here. This has, has used the phase difference between all of the frames to generate a, a model of the wave front, which is now stitched together and uh, a continuous um, model. I need to generate um, Zernike coefficients from this in order to do the shearing interferometry. This uh, Zernike model is used as an interpolating function, so we're going to uh, set that. Now, uh, we've defined the X shear interpolating function, but now we need the Y one. So we're going to open the Y shearogram. It's very similar to the X shearogram. It's a phase shifting interferogram also, but it's sheared in the other direction. It's sheared with the same amount of shear relative to the radius. It's a uh, it's a, um, that's an important thing, and I'll explain that a little bit later. All right. All right, now we've, we've put an outline around the bottom of the two wave fronts, and we'll click this. It automatically assumes that these shear the shear is the same in both directions. Um, and, uh, we can do the phase shifting analysis here. I'll set the point density as before. And then we'll do the analysis. We have a wave front, do a Zernike um, fit, and set the interpolating function. Because we have used the same amount of shear in both X and Y, we have two options for calculating the wavefront. Direct integration is the most straightforward. The way it works is the two uh, wavefronts that we've gotten from the shearograms are used as 
the um, uh, two components of a gradient of the original wavefront field. Those two um, components of the gradient are used in calculating a line integral from the center, which our reference point will be the center of the aperture, uh, from the center of the interferogram to all points in the interferogram. That, uh, those line integrals, and when we uh, calculate them, provide us with a model of the wavefront, which can then be used to calculate Zernike coefficients. Here's the model. It, um, um, it corresponds only to the area of overlap, and only to the green outline area. That's the way the direct integration works, because you have to have data for uh, both x and y shear in order to do that integration. And we have, therefore, a model of the middle part of the aperture, which is potentially useful. It has some, some drawbacks, though. The, um, the interpolating function that's used, well, the integration is really not, um, really not um, accurate because of the fact that there's a finite amount of shear here, and, and a gradient would assume a differential shear. And if we had to use the differential shear, we, you know, we'd have zero uh, contrast, zero fringes. So this finite amount of shear means that we're approximating the gradient with this difference rather than with a derivative. And that approximation can cause errors. So we have a, we have a, a, a model of the interior part of the aperture, and that model is inaccurate because of the fact that we have used a finite shear. In smoothly varying wavefronts, that accurate, the accuracy of that approximation can be pretty good, but it's possible to improve the accuracy and to increase the area that we are um, able to model by using this Okuda method. Okuda's method is a method that's been, um, that was um, documented in a paper written by Okuda et al., and, uh, which demonstrates the use of a uh, transfer matrix technique for relating the Zernike coefficients of the shearing, um, the, sh the integrated wavefront, and those of the original wavefront. Um, so this, this, um, this, by not using all of the terms in the fringe set of Zernike coefficients, we can avoid some ringing that occur around the edge and some inaccuracies that correspond to the um, the fact that that the difference can mask. Um, the fact that it's a difference and not a differential can mask some features of the original wavefront that we can never recover. So I'm going to set, I'm going to leave the default here. The default should work pretty well most of the time, but you can reduce this if it looks like the edges are exhibiting some funny behavior. We're just going to go ahead and use this. Now the software calculates the transfer matrix. That transfer matrix relates the um, the Zernike coefficients of the integrated wavefront that you've just seen, and that of the original um, the original wavefront. So the original wavefront is now reconstructed here. This um, in the original the uh, this is this uh, uh, synthetic interferogram. Both of these are synthetic interferograms, and and when they were generated, there was um, in the model uh, uh, two waves RMS of spherical aberration and um, so we've reconstructed that to pretty good accuracy it's uh, three percent uh, and um, now that we have this model we can as uh, we could with other techniques create a report that um, shows the characteristics of of the uh, surface and I'll just go ahead and uh, overwrite the report that's in this folder. And right now it's generating the models of the wave, so we're going to overwrite this report. And it opens in LibreOffice. And as you can see, we have a report that, that uh, shows the surface as reconstructed from the two sheerograms. Thank you very much. This um, this is a demonstration of how to do shearing interferometry with interfringe. Um, if you're curious about uh, some of the other features of this program, please look at some of the other videos that we have uploaded. Thank you.